And even Japan is not part of that core group. Yeah. That's worrisome for Asia, isn't it? I'm, I'm, I'm not saying anything negative about Korea. I think you're doing a fine job in growing <laughs> as a country, yeah? <laughs> doing your best and, and coming up yeah, on that ladder, on that scale. Yeah. Okay, so international collaborations are more important for scientists, particularly in the natural sciences, than local university and university development relations. Yeah. We have to face that fact. Yeah. Advanced nations are able to capitalize on international relations with retaining wealth for knowledge. And that wealth can be global knowledge. Yeah? So it can be the mechanism, the question is what do, how do, do the Japanese manage? Yeah, to get those international relations into the national system. Yeah. <coughs> That's a beautiful example. We happen to have that data. <coughs> we have the same data for Canada, but Canada has always been internationalized because it's a border country of the United States. And most of the professors are from the United States. Yeah, so they are imported. Yeah. <coughs> so and, and and this comes from the, the study with Han. It matters. Government policies matter. Yeah, so it matters to an amazing extent. I found that picture which we have for, uh, for Korea, I found it very amazing. Uh, uh, Steve's line, the dictatorship and then democratization and then liberalization and then globalization. That's very amazing. And maybe that's not the case in, in most Western countries. Maybe the government is not so influential as it is in Korea. Uh, but it is impressive to see. But it matters. So these were the conclusions let's say about the science system. I'm now going to generalize the concept. How am I doing this time? How am I doing it? Fine. <coughs> the generalization of the indicator, because it provides us with a model for anything which you can split up in three dimensions. Yeah. We can take university, industry, government. We can take text, people. And now, of course, the question becomes how for economics? How for economies? What's a knowledge-based economy? And then people from, some people, some colleagues from Rotterdam phoned me, in, I think in 2004, we, look, we have beautiful data. We have data which we should test using your type of models. <coughs> we have data for all Dutch companies, and we have the geographical address. We have the size as an indicator, as a proxy for organization. Yeah. Geographical address, that has to do with an endowment structure. Industrial structure in terms of size and organizational characteristics. And we have the OECD index. The OECD gives a Nazi index for what type of industry it is, whether it's chemistry or electronics or household, and also whether this industry is knowledge intensive or not knowledge intensive. So we have three dimensions which we can use as proxies for, on the one side, geographic location, yeah, which has to do with government. Yeah. If you are positioned in, in Korea, then you have a geographic Korea, uh, location in Korea, and the, the government is Korean. Yeah. We have uh, technological capacity, infrastructure, and we have in, industrial structure, and the firms, over a million, are the units of analysis. And then we do the same story like and we have the picture, this is the Netherlands, for the people who are not familiar with that. Yeah. <laughs> and this is Amsterdam, and, and Amsterdam is doing fine, so I can go home and sleep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Because it's the Amsterdam Rotterdam, the Amsterdam Utrecht region, which we know to be very intensive in knowledge. We know also the Rotterdam, the Hague region. We know also Eindhoven as a center of activities where Philips company is housed. What was a bit of a surprise for us was that this was so well done. Yeah. What was not a surprise was that it was poorer here and it was poorer here. Yeah. <laughs> and, that we, and particularly here in the north in the past, uh, that's why the old uh, cattle uh, breeding and things like that is. And it's not yet always intensive because the modern things are here. Yeah. There's also cattle breeding there. But, uh, uh, different type. So we did the same. I went to a conference in, in Milan and I said, does anybody have data? 
uh, similar data for Israel or Sweden, whatever office of statistics there is. And then someone from Germany said, we have data. So this is for Germany, yeah? Similar data. Yeah? And you see nicely Hamburg here, and you see uh, Frankfurt here, Munich. We don't understand this. This, this is Dresden. And you see, what's most important here is that you no longer see the East-West divide. Yeah? So there are parts of Germany in the East doing well, there are parts of German, part of Germany in the West no longer doing well. Yeah? <coughs> so you see here uh, uh, the German, it can be extended and we can do it at the, at the regional level, you can take Bavaria in itself and then you can nicely, and uh, you need a German to explain precisely what's happening. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, uh, <coughs> next time, uh, a year later, I was approached by someone from Hungary. He said, I have the similar data. It's not precisely the same data. It's only knowledge intensive industries, but it's nevertheless interesting. Let me first go to the Hungarian data to show you that. And we thought, oh, we don't understand a thing of that. Because this is Budapest, yeah, which is fine. And why is this part of Hungary doing so well? Yeah? Because that's near the Soviet Union, I mean, that's near Russia, that's the, the Russian side. We would expect the Austrian side to do well. And then gradually we became, it became clear to us, there is no national system in Hungary. There are three national systems in Hungary, or three regional innovation systems in Hungary. And that's Budapest, which is a city, a metropolitan center, which is competing with Vienna, and Prague and other metropolitan centers. And there is the western part of the countries, which is integrated as a periphery to Austria and Germany in the European Union, and no longer under control of the, Euro of the Hungarians. Yeah. It's, it's a kind of colony, but it is not a colony, because they want to be there. Yeah. And then there is the eastern part of the country, which has the old system, which is pretty well integrated. It's a Soviet system still. Yeah, it's poor, but it is integrated. It has a synergy. It, it produces, for example, buses. With buses, they, they can only sell to India. Yeah? Old-fashioned buses are, are things from, the, from 10 years ago. Yeah? And it functions well. So, <clears throat> and then we checked, and you can indeed show that the, if you try to do it for the whole of Hungary, you have no synergy. Let me try to explain that. We, we can then test for the whole versus the sum of the parts. Yeah? And then you can say, is there additional synergy in the whole? If you do that for the Netherlands, you find additional synergy for the whole. If you do it for Germany, you do not find additional synergy for the whole. Because the synergy is at the level of the states. Germany is a federal republic. So it's not at the level of the whole. And moreover, at the level of the whole, they probably still suffer from the East-West problem. And if you do the same for, for Hungary, you don't find any synergy at the, at, the, at the level between the regions and the whole, because it's common. So where does this lead us in terms of conclusions? This comes from... The Netherlands and, this, and, and uh, I don't have more countries than these three. Yeah? If you have beautiful data, please let me know. Send me an email. Let me work it out. And, <coughs> and it's a chapter of your dissertation. Yeah? Okay. Uh, medium tech manufacturing. This, this is, these are very interesting conclusions which come from those two studies. Medium tech manufacturing is more important than high tech manufacturing for the knowledge-based economy. Why is that? Because high-tech manufacturing is more footloose than medium-tech. It means that if you have a high-tech company and there is a reason to move to Singapore, it's easy to move. Yeah. Well, if you have a medium-tech company, you're entrenched in the economy, you're embedded. Yeah. So the knowledge becomes more important. Knowledge intensive services uncoupled from the geographically defined economy, for example in regions. The example which we give is the